Thank you for the introduction, and also thank you all for being here. Uh, before I get started, I want to take a minute to motivate our topic. The world we live in and the, our everyday lives are increasingly becoming more digital, and this is very apparent here at USENIX, of course. And one aspect of our lives that is subject to this are many types of official and important documents, and this includes prescriptions, driver licenses, IDs, and other similar documents that are either already digital or will be in the not-so-distant future. And this poses a new challenge. Verification of digital certificates is different from the known physical counterparts that we're already familiar with. And in the driver license example, if a police officer did not correctly verify driver licenses, it would possibly allow anyone to drive around without proper training, so in essence, a driver license. And this would then lead to other road users possibly being in danger. We identified such a problem, which led to this research. But first, what are visual digital certificates? They are authentication documents that can be verified offline by, for example, scanning a QR code um, with a specific app that checks whether the digital signature contained in the QR code is valid. For our paper, we looked at the largest rollout of such digital, uh, visual digital certificates to our knowledge, which are the digital COVID certificates in the EU. They were rolled out during the pandemic to verify a person's vac vaccination, testing, or recovery status regarding COVID-19. From our own experience going to restaurants, the gym, bars, et cetera, and also a lot of anecdotal evidence, we realized that while certificates are a good idea in theory, they were often not verified correctly, sufficiently, in the real world. Verifiers would just look at certificates without scanning, skip matching the identity, or do both. And this has the consequence that malicious actors can abuse the fact that the verification is not done right and start using counterfeit certificates or those belonging to others. But what does a correct verification procedure entail anyway? Only when the verification is done correctly, like I'll show you now, do the security guarantees hold. First, a person has to present a visual certificate, for example, on their smartphone or a piece of paper. A verifier, which could, for example, be someone working at a restaurant or gym, then has to use a scanning device with an appropriate app to scan the shown certificate, which will then display whether the certificate is valid or not. The app used for scanning will also display information about the certificate owner and then has to be compared with an ID from the person presenting to make sure they match. And based on the outcome from the previous steps, the verifier then decides how to proceed, which could, for example, mean allowing or denying entry to a restaurant or gym. And when the scanning is skipped, invalid certificates may be used. And when the ID matching is skipped, certificates may also belong to another person. To investigate this problem, we propose the following two research questions. First, how do professional users verify the digital COVID certificates? And second, what understanding do these professional users have of the underlying verification process of said certificates? And professional users in this context refers to individuals who verify the certificates as part of their duties at work. Our research questions led us to use an inductive exploratory approach, and we conducted semi-structured interviews which consisted of multiple parts. In addition to various questions about participants' jobs and their technical understanding of the verification procedure, we presented them with multiple interactive scenarios where they were asked to perform the verification of different representations of certificates themselves. And you can see two of the three scenarios on the slide. This verification task was designed to simulate a real-life verification procedure as closely as possible and participants were told to verify each of the three certificates we gave them one after another while thinking out loud and explaining their rationales for what they were doing. They were presented along with a fictionalized person that was the person presenting the certificate to them, and when they asked to see an ID, uh, as you, which, as you remember, is part of the correct verification procedure, we showed them um, the respective ID belonging to the person presenting. Later, we performed qu uh, qualitative data analysis using a thematic analysis approach that consisted of open and axle coding, which finally led to a codebook that we used to create the results that we will get to in a second. Before that, I want to quickly highlight our demographics because we managed to recruit participants from varying education, most age groups, and various workplaces, such as the cinema and theater, retail stores, restaurants, and so on. And this helped us to get a very diverse and rich insights for our research questions. But with that, I will now hand over uh, to Alexander for the results. Thank you, Daniel. 
Um, so yeah, let's look at the results first for the research question one, which was uh, how do users actually verify these virtual digital certificates in the real world? When investigating this, we identified four major building blocks that constitute users' verification behavior. So first up, the most prominent action was of course scanning the certificate. And almost all participants were aware that this is a vital component of the correct verification. However, we observed some confusion when it comes to the app used to scan the QR code. For instance, one participant would use their personal storage app to scan other people's certificates, and in the process, they would just permanently be stored on their device. When it comes to checking the ID, it was for the most part straightforward, the only caveat being that some compared the information present alongside the QR code rather than what they obtained through scanning and therefore the information contained in the certificate. Now, apart from the first two vital components of verification, we encountered different actions which users would perform while checking the certificate. So on the one hand, we have a visual verification, and this includes looking at any visual cues present in the interface, such as colors, for instance. So participants would associate colors such as green and blue with a valid certificate, and colors such as red and gray with an invalid one. Users would also look for any textual cues, such as a string saying, this certificate is valid until, and use this information for their final verification. Now, of course, this information is only present for a certificate holder, but should never be used for verification. Finally, we observed verifiers engaging in a personal assessment of the certificate holder themselves, meaning that they would judge the trustworthiness of the person in front of them, and they would base this on factors such as age, sex, or just the looks in general. Now, we use these four building blocks to develop types of verification behavior which our participants would fall into. And we developed four types in total, but due to time constraints, I'm not going to talk about all of them, so if you want to learn more, please refer to the paper. Uh, for now, let's just look at type number three, uh, and we named this type selective scanning. So a user applying this type of verification would first perform a visual verification, looking for anything they consider out of the ordinary. And at the same time, they would assess the certificate holder's credibility. If and only if some suspicions arose during these initial checks, they would then go on and actually scan the certificate and check the person's ID before coming to a decision. Now, when we dug deeper into this behavior type, we found that users often felt time pressure and were therefore inclined to shortcut verification in such a way. Regarding our second research question, so users' understanding of the verification process, our findings can be grouped into three categories. First off, we have the threat models that verifiers considered, their technical understanding of the system in general, and user education, meaning how users learned about the process and what sources they used. Now here, I want to briefly highlight a quote from one of our interviews, which includes some interesting insights. So this person, used to work as a waitress in a bar, and she told us, being a young woman, it happened to me once that a couple of guys came in, and they all obviously used screenshots. So I told them, guys, that's not possible. But they started acting up, and I was working alone, and so unfortunately, I couldn't do anything but accept it. Now let's look at this in detail. First, we have the screenshots, which were the most prominent threat our participants were concerned about. This points as a lack of a technical understanding, since a screenshot of a valid certificate still upholds all the security guarantees when verified correctly. Also, we can see in this example that non-technical issues could compromise the process, such as businesses not providing their employees with sufficient protection. Also, some participants stated that they felt the lack of authority to reject customers. And along the same lines, we saw that a conflict of interest uh, was apparent where certain businesses were inclined to verify less rigorously and therefore not driving away potential customers. So based on our findings, we identified the main challenges that we as a community should address going forward with the uh, technology of visual digital certificates. First, uh, verifiers will misuse auxiliary data. So they will rely on any information present alongside the certificate and seek to shortcut verification 
whenever possible. So we therefore suggest removing any form of visual cues and auxiliary information from the interface that is used to present the certificate. And in doing so, we can steer verifiers towards a more secure um, approach when verifying. Uh, we furthermore found that verifiers have an incomplete threat awareness. So for the most part, our participants will talk about threats originating from the certificate holder, so the person presenting the certificate, but they were um, not aware of any faults that could be introduced by a faulty verification process. Um, also, past research highlighted that it is not sufficient to only inform users about the correct procedure, but they also need to be aware of the purpose of each and every step in order to perform it properly. And finally, we saw how structural issues can lead to inconsistent verification. And therefore, we need to also educate business owners and create legal guidelines regulating the whole environment around certificate verification. So to summarize, visual digital certificates have the potential to replace many important documents that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. However, they can only uphold their security guarantees if we verify them in a correct way. So in our study, we looked into the verification behavior and the understanding of users working with certificates in a professional environment. We highlight the most important challenges we have to address and provide both technical and structural recommendations for the design of future systems. So now, all that remains is, again, pointing at the paper, and if you want to get in touch with us, please drop us an email, talk to us in the hallway, or use the golden opportunity and step up to the mic and ask us a question now. Thank you.